All right, should we try this again? <laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we just shot a clip just a second ago, and everything was going great. And we thought, hey, this is going to be a good clip. And uh, then I realized that I didn't have the microphones plugged in. <laughs> so this is take two. This is take two. <laughs> and you might need to speak up a little bit, too. Oh, okay. Well, you know, you're always talking so soft. Pretend that you're mad at me, but, but do it with a smile. Wow. <laughs> That's going to take a lot of acting ability. <laughs> if I can pull that off, I think I can win an Oscar. Yeah, pretend you're mad at me and do it with a smile. All right. Okay, well, uh, we spent our first night last night at a new campground. We're at a different campground now. And uh, we are not going to reveal where we are. We're going to save that for when we do the in-depth review here in a few days. But uh, I will say this. It's absolutely, well, we said that about the last one too. Yeah. But it's absolutely gorgeous here. I mean, and I'm not just saying that. It's, it's absolutely beautiful here. Now, this particular campground, it's still a Corps of Engineer campground. Um, it uh, it only has 40 sites total. Is that correct? 47. 47. All right. Well, we'll, we'll tell you exactly how many it has when we do the review here in a little while, in, in a few days or a uh, week and a half or so. But uh, we're, right, we're still on Beaver Lake. And all I'm going to say is this one is uh, between Rogers, Arkansas and Eureka Springs. You go out Highway 62 for a ways, you turn back right at a small little town called Garfield, and that's as far as I'm gonna go with that. And you go down this real nice, curvy, beautiful road with beautiful views of the lake as you're driving down here. And uh, a lot of twists and turns. It's uh, quite, a, quite a curvy road, but uh, we managed to get the trailer down here with no problem whatsoever. Most of these sites are on the, they're kind of on the side of the hill. Every one of them have, I would say, a pretty good, beautiful view of the lake, wouldn't you say so? I would so? think the yeah. way they're terraced Yeah, in they're here. all terraced in here. Uh, all of the spots that we saw are nice and level and real easy to set up. So, uh, and this particular one that we're at right now is a drive through spot, which uh, that made it so much easier. Yeah. Instead of having to back in. <laughs> but uh, anyway, the water is just absolutely beautiful. I'm going to show you our view here in just a little bit. But we, first, we thought we'd talk about a couple of things. We've had a lot of folks ask if there's anything that we would tweak differently now that we've been in the trailer for a while. And I guess uh, we've been at a full six weeks now. Is that right? Uh, yes, I Yeah, full so. six weeks. And um, about the only thing that uh, we would tweak on this particular build is uh and well i need to re uh, back up a little bit the only thing that we uh have tweaked on this particular build is just uh little things like hanging some extra hooks here and there to the wall hooks in order to hang different things right right i've decided i needed some place to hang a sweater since i hadn't anticipated on needing a coat or a sweater but i put up a hook for that and now that i have put the sweater away we hope um, Bill hangs his hats there, so that was good. And I also put a hook up to hang my purse because I guess I didn't think about that I needed a place for that to be. So that was the only thing I think that I have modified yeah. inside at all. Yeah. There's a couple of other little things that I'm fixing to do, and I'll talk more about it here in just a little bit. Uh, keep in mind that we do have uh, regular RV-style sewer dumps on our trailer. And because the trailer sits so low to the ground, I tucked the sewer dumps under, up underneath the frame and then did a 45 degree turn down. You actually can't see the sewer dumps uh, when you're standing beside the trailer. You have to get down close to see them. But uh, uh, there has been a couple little issues uh, because of where the sewer dumps are and, and the overall height of the trailer itself. So I am gonna get into that here in just a little bit. And we're gonna show you uh, what I would do if I was to order another trailer to be built. And now that I bring that up, I'm already talking about a, another design. No, we're not. <laughs> Just little bitty things here and there. Uh, the basic floor plan would be the same. Uh, so let's get that out of the way right now. The floor plan would be the same. But a couple little things that I would do differently, and uh, we're going to get into that here in just a little bit. Uh, but first, what I'm going to do, is there anything else you want to bring out before, uh, before I move on? The only other thing we would have done differently is, uh, of course, we've talked about that before, taller doors. Yeah, right. And right. I even think I would add 
the screen door because it would be real nice to have the doors open but still bugs and stuff couldn't get in and the cat would have a place to look out. Yeah, yeah. Right yeah. now she wants to jump up on the yeah. on the bar and, and look I'm out through the window. I'm letting her do that. I don't like that, but yeah. she's got to be able to look out a window. Yeah, um, we're. She does not like her leash and harness yet. We're still arguing that yeah. point, but we'll see how that works out. <laughs> but uh, I think what's going on with Delilah, our kitty cat, is you know she she lived in a house for uh, you know, just about ever since we got her, and then we move into this uh, different uh, lifestyle where we're at a different spot every two weeks. So the surroundings are all different to her. And what we've noticed here is it, it seems as if when we take her outside, she's scared to death because it's, you know, when we go to a new spot, she's, she's scared because she, she's not in familiar surroundings. Then when we bring her back into the trailer, which she's been in the trailer now, sleeping with us and everything for the last six weeks, then it's like she's inspecting the trailer to make sure it's the same house it's always has it's been. It's kind of strange. Yeah. I'd like to know what she's thinking. <laughs> yeah. Maybe some of you out there that, um, that, uh, are little, experts. yeah, cat experts can tell us maybe what she's thinking, but it's like she has to go through and inspect the trailer all over again, just as if we moved into a new house. And it's just simply because we've went to a different spot, but it's obvious that the surroundings are different to her every time when we, when we take her there. So that is a problem. That we're having to overcome and hopefully she'll get used to that in time get used to traveling and maybe that's just something that you know she'll have to uh, to get used to uh we are on 30 amp service only here we'll br briefly mention that right quick uh these sites here uh only have 30 well there was a couple that had 50. yeah, yeah. But, we yeah. Didn't get one. but we didn't get one we got one with 30 and the main reason why we did is when we pulled into this spot we had excellent phone service but if we moved to a different spot <laughs> we didn't have excellent phone service so that's why we chose this spot and phone service uh, is important to us. Yeah, phone service is important, <laughs> yeah, because I still have my part-time job and things like that. But uh, uh, we were a little concerned because we are total electric. You know, we have an electric hot water tank, uh, and, of course, we cook with all electric uh, appliances. And so we were a little concerned uh, if we'd be able to run everything uh, together with a 30-amp service. And so we tried it this morning. We had the coffee pot going. We left the hot water tank on. We have a way of switching it off and on if we need to. But we left the hot water tank on, and then you uh, you pulled out the waffle iron and cooked waffles. Yep. And um, so we had the electric hot water tank, the waffle iron, and the coffee pot. And then, of course, we had the ceiling fan going, uh, which the runs off of the, the, the max fan. Yep. And, of course, we know it runs off a of 12 volt, but we still have a converter, you know, that is powered by... 120 volt that is uh, uh, keeping the battery uh, charged so but everything worked fine there was no problem whatsoever uh, now I don't know if you would have been able to pull out the induction cooktop in addition to the waffle iron didn't try it yeah we didn't try it <laughs> um, but here again uh, if if, it, if uh, we're a little concerned if we have an issue we can always switch the hot water tank off now the hot water tank uh, from cold water to hot water enough to take two showers only takes about 30 minutes uh, so it only takes about 30 minutes for the hot water tank to heat up that ain't no big deal to us you know if uh, if that's what we have to do that's what we have to do um, now we don't have an air conditioner yet everything is all set up for the air conditioner and we will be getting it installed before too long <laughs> we're having to recoup funds is the reason why we haven't done the air conditioner yet we just have to recoup some funds but and we uh, don't need it yet and we don't need it yet we're uh, you know the nights are still nice and cool the max fan works great uh drawing the air in and then we run a little fan on the inside as well uh pointed at us on the bed and usually we're you know tucking way up underneath the covers by about uh three o'clock in the morning yeah you know because it's getting kind of cool but anyway uh that's where we are right now everything is working great this is such a beautiful day we've got to go into town here in a little while and i really don't want to leave but there's a few things well we have the refrigerator's to do about empty does that inspire you we need to go into town <laughs> i figured he'd see it my way <laughs> we need to go into town <laughs> yeah we got to get groceries so anyway so we're going to shut this clip down right here and i'm, and I'm going to give me a second to re uh, reset up the the camera and we're going to shoot a couple a little bit more footage here i'm going to show you the beautiful view we have and then we'll talk about the couple little things that I would do different and recommend that you do differently if you decide to order a basic trailer to do your own build to keep these things in mind. So hang on just a second. 
All right, everybody, I'm standing up here on a little bit of a hillside right here, uh, just above the trailer. Wanted to give you an idea of the view that we have. So let me do a slow pan here to the left. And we have this uh, bathhouse right there. By the way, it just has vault toilets in there. And uh, swinging on around here. But this is what we woke up to this morning. Uh, and of course, we uh, got all set up yesterday afternoon and set out here in our in our chairs for a while and just looked at the water but it's absolutely beautiful here absolutely beautiful here so uh, we're going to really enjoy these next two weeks that we have uh, that we're going to be staying here uh, they are predicting some rough weather uh, tomorrow we'll see what happens uh, they're saying we could even have hail but you know we've already been through one uh, hail storm when we were over at the other campground we were over at uh, horseshoe bend which we just did an in-depth review uh, about that particular campground. So this is uh, this is what we've got going on now <laughs> for two weeks. I know it's tough, but uh, we'll get through it somehow. I don't know exactly how, but we'll get through it somehow. And if you look right down there, it looks like, yeah, that's a spot right there. Look how that one's overlooking the water right there. But we'll take you through and show you all the pretty spots and everything. Where we are right now, it's, it's, I will say this, it's not too far from the dam. It's fairly, fairly close to the, to the dam. And uh, the water here is crystal clear. All right, now let me step down here to the trailer. A couple of things I want to show you that uh, I have discovered and had to uh, come up with different ways to deal with it. This is our where we have our two drains coming out. This is for the sink drain here. Now, you see just a regular garden-style hose coming out into the smaller tank there, the 10-gallon tank. Now, the sewer dump is just up, tucked up underneath the trailer there, and it is a regular 3-inch style sewer dump, but I have the, uh, the cap uh, on that that has the uh, regular garden hose outlet on it, so that's how we're utilizing that right there. This one is not a real issue uh, because the tank is shallower, of course, because it's just a 10-gallon tank. Now over here, this one, and I've got two drains running into it with a Y. This is uh, this drains the shower, which has a regular type sewer dump, and I still have the adapter. Then there's also another drain that comes down from the bathroom area. And we'll talk about more about how that all works here in a future video down the road. But right now I've got a Y connector connected to both uh, drains coming down. I have a, an adapter on the sewer type uh, uh, outlet uh, on the shower drain. And then I have a regular garden hose uh, attachment on the other one. So even when I am connected to, uh, to regular sewer with regular 3-inch uh, sewer drains and everything, I will still have to utilize a small tank for the drain that comes from the bath bathroom area, but that's not a big deal. Uh, but the issue that I've got is because this tank is a little bit taller and I want to have enough slope for it to drain and we even discovered we had a problem with this when we were at a campsite that had a regular where it had a sewer at the site uh, we're still because the trailer sits so low to the ground we still had issues with a good slope uh, and the sewer dump that was at the site had a tube that's sticking up out of the ground a little bit had it been flush with the ground it would have made a, a big difference but uh, that is an issue so what i'm having to do and this one this particular site was a little bit simpler because it's pretty level uh, but what I'm having to do is uh, you know uh, raise the trailer right now I've got it raised two inches on either side the uh, the site was fairly level side to side so I didn't have to worry about uh, you know putting more blocks on one side than the other there's been times when I've had to put uh, three or raise this side three inches just to make sure that I have enough slope um, for well especially this one over here had I if I was able to do it over again I would probably go with straight axles rather than the four inch drop axles. Theoretically, that would have given me an extra four inches of clearance, which would have made all the difference in the world. Um, so that's the one thing. If you're looking at doing something like this and you're considering installing regular sewer dumps like I did and have them tucked up underneath the trailer, strongly consider spending the little bit extra money. And I can't remember how much it was, but it's not very much strongly consider going with straight axles rather than the four inch drop axles like I did um, because uh, you know you're going to need that clearance in order to make sure everything drains properly so that's the main thing there's a couple of things I will show you a little bit later a little thing that I had to design 
in order to use our fresh water tank and fill it properly. But we'll talk about that a little bit later in, a, in, another, uh, in another video. But that's the main thing that I wanted to point out right there, uh, you know, on that. So uh, that's, uh, that's about it there. That's uh, something that you need to think about. Seriously, seriously, you need to think about that. I strongly consider going with the straight axles if you're going to go ahead and run regular sewer dump, dumps and uh, dump them out the bottom like we did here. So, is there anything else you want to add before we, before we shut her down? I don't think so. You don't think so? I don't think so. Can't think of anything. <sighs> Okay. Just gonna enjoy this beautiful day. Yeah. Well, we don't have to go into town quite yet, so we can sit out here and enjoy it for a little bit longer, right? We <laughs> we can't. We got to go ahead and. I would rather go ahead and get it over with and get back out here. <laughs> I don't want to go. <laughs> That's what I would rather do, but you know. All right. Fine. Anyway, folks. Uh, Hope you have a good week, and uh, we will see you again soon. Let me give them one more look at the view before we go. Hey, all right, all right. Let me step around over here, and give you one more look at this view. There's quite a few houses along over there too. I just don't know how to get down to where those houses are. They don't want me bugging them anyway. But uh, let me step around here and give you a good shot of the view. Now this is right out our side door right here. This is what we step out into. All right, folks. Let's go say goodbye to Deb one more time. All right, Deb. Yeah. It's time to say goodbye. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. <laughs> this is Bill and Deb with I Ride Tiny House Adventures. We'll see you again soon. Y'all take care. Bye-bye now.